Hello and welcome, I'm Dan here from Low Manor and yesterday we finally got our 90 minute gameplay video that was shown at EA Play. It's narrated by Ben Irvin who leads us through the demo along with four experienced pilots who have been practicing for months. So at E3 we finally got a look into actual gameplay for Anthem. Unfortunately it was cut down to only 4 minutes, so we missed a lot of the scale and feel of the gameplay. The 90 minute version which itself is shortened gives us a much better impression. And personally, if they had shown this instead of the E3 panel, I think it would have been much more successful. But enough of that, and on to what we learnt. We get the full cutscene leading into the mission, with the new NPC, Faye, talking to the previously seen Halleck, the retired pilot you get to see in the cinematic trailer. The third person you see is your cipher for the mission, who we previously only heard talking over comms, Owen. While he preps the javelin, Faye and Halleck are talking about the contract we are on. Presumably that's what they call the missions we get sent on by certain groups, such as the agents from the Sentinels. Supply caravans are being attacked by increasingly aggressive Scar, who have been developing new acidic weapons, making them significantly more deadly. Something minor this does confirm is that it's not just freelancers out in the world, which takes me back to the initial reveal gameplay that shows a Strider being taken down by the Scar. Are these the caravans and if so, what the hell are they doing outside of Fort Tarsus? There is a reason freelancers need javelins to even go outside. The world is really dangerous, but I guess they do need to get their resources to eat, to build and trade. So does that mean there are settlements or outposts away from Fort Tarsus to trade between? Or are they just going out and collecting resources then returning? In either case, it seems somewhat odd that freelancers aren't going out there protecting them, even if they are just a deterrent. To me this is just a sign of how strict the resources within freelancers are. They can't protect everyone. There just aren't enough freelancers, and it's so resource intensive to create new javelins capable of going outside they can't keep up with the demand. This is reinforced as Ben goes on to explain. Javelins are in some way more reminiscent of heirlooms. They are handed down within families, meaning these javelins could be hundreds of years old, going some way to support the theory I have. The freelancers didn't create their javelins, at least not entirely. Instead, they or perhaps their ancestors within the Legion of Dawn discovered them. It's possible that one or more of the relics actually produced parts of the suits, which is why all the javelins are themed to the environments. The freelancers since then have added to them, modding them, adding weapons and understanding how to maintain the javelin frames, but not enough to create their own. This could be a very interesting plot point. What if we find a way to create new javelins, and that's why the Dominion want to take over certain relics? Not just because they're dangerous, but if controlled correctly, they could be the first to produce new javelins, making them monumentally more powerful. Anyway, that might be something for a different video. I'll put away the tinfoil hat and get back to the gameplay. So where was I? Ah yes, the cutscene. We of course are going to track down the scars producing these new weapons and shut them down. So it's finally time to put on a suit and head out. Before we can do that, the voice of Ben kicks back in and confirms that it's here within the Strider or Fort Tarsus, depending on what you're doing, is where we actually alter our suits, cosmetics, abilities and weapon loadouts. Now we really are starting to see something new as we go into the mission UI, something we will be seeing a lot, but this is our first glimpse. We have some basic information and a lot of new minor information. First up, we're on the summaries page which consists of a small map of where we are, the objectives and the difficulty. It's currently set to normal, which opens the possibility that we can alter the difficulty of missions we have already played, keeping the story of missions relevant even in the later or possibly the end game itself. A hint towards the Eld game perhaps. The next tab that we move over to is the social tab. Here we can invite friends, sign up for matchmaking, or more importantly, invite guild members. Finally, some confirmation that we will have a guild system. Another small detail is if you look at the banner of our character in-game. They are in a colossus, but the image is clearly a storm. So is this just a placeholder, or is this a customizable feature? A bit like Flare in the Destiny games. A minor reward for playing the different javelins, completing strongholds, or maybe the raids. My last point about this screen is to the right, a consumables tab. I honestly don't have too many ideas about what these are just yet, but I would take a wild guess that crafting could influence these a lot. We do get to see one of these in action later on, with the ranger throwing a flare into the subterranean chamber, so these are likely to be situational or minor items. Perhaps emergency heals or ammo, 
but I would prefer these to be less combat effective. Once we're done with this screen, to go out on our excursions we need to pick a place to go. For the demo they went on a story mission that went on to unlock a replayable stronghold. Seeing as these are end game activities, it's nice that they actually tie into the story. Much like MMO dungeons that they clearly take inspiration from. Along with the missions we have lots of other icons and locations, and keep in mind it's been confirmed this is but a small portion of the map. The map has what look to be regions within it that are titles. Academy Ruins, Great Falls Canyon, East Gate, Eastern Terrace, High Road and Fortress of Dawn. That last one really stands out to me. The Legion of Dawn are the precursors to the Freelancers, and more likely the Dominion. Is this their original home base? And if so, why aren't we based out of it? Clearly something happened. I'm hesitant to say this is where the Dominion themselves are, rather this is now a relic lost to history, likely holding secrets left buried as an answer to where the Javelins originate, lost technology, a key into the understanding of our past, maybe all of these. The icons we have take me back to the initial speculation we had all the way back in 2017. The stone arch is clearly a reference to ruins, places to explore, uncover lore, resources and gain that sweet XP Kim so desperately desires. We have the mission marker, a marker for the most current mission, or perhaps a waypoint for one that you're going to go on, with the three triangles possibly being past missions we have already been on, but can go back and replay. The other idea I have for these could be public events such as the Titan we see roaming about on our way to the Stronghold, and given the position we are on the map, it could easily pass the one near the Academy Ruins. There is the return of the Skull Icon, clearly some form of difficult encounter or maybe even a boss. This could be what we see when we discover Strongholds. Finally, the last icon is very clearly Fort Tarsus itself, sitting on the edge of the High Road region. We can even see Fort Tarsus far in the background of the opening shot. Now, with my love of lore, I would be missing out if I didn't mention the first part of the in-game lore directory we learn about. In the cave we see our first scannable object, which updates a journal of sorts, so we can go back and review the lore out of the world as not to interrupt the gameplay. In this case it was a rune, named Arcanist Resonance. I think these are a set of runes from the wording, Ben also confirms that they don't just give lore, but some offer resources and items. If anyone has played Destiny, or has even heard about their lore, this has some clear comparisons to the grimoire of old, but kept in-game, learning from the many mistakes Destiny has made. This is great for the lore community, I just hope we have an idea of how many there will be to collect, and I can't wait to see what stories they have to tell. This is only the beginning, yet we've got so much new information. Next time, I'll be covering off all the enemies we uncovered, and what we learn about the environment itself. There's so much to break down here, so it may take me a few days to run through it all. Thanks for watching this video. What did you think after seeing the full Stronghold mission? More interested or still waiting to see more? If you enjoyed this episode, please leave us a like, subscribe to support the channel, and hit that little bell for notifications as new content goes live. Until next time, I've been Dante. Thanks for watching.